All right, welcome to part four, the very last of these um, video lectures. It's going to be fairly short, I think. This is just trying to explain what normal probability plots, sometimes QQ plots, quantile, quantile. Um, so let's start with looking at a variable in the support data set. Now this variable, there's two sets of dots here. Let's just look at the red ones. This variable is scores people got on the positive support scale. So these, this, this scale has questions that say, you know, strongly agree, strongly disagree. Like people supported me be to come to college. They told me I was smart. They said you can do it, etc. They gave me encouragement. Not very many people got low scores on this. These people, their friends and family suck. Um, but as you go up here, lots and lots of people got pretty high scores on this. So this is a negatively skewed distribution, as you can see, left skewed. Now, I've also plotted in here some dots that correspond to where each of these dots should be. Now, I, I did dots and lines, which is not standard histogram stuff, just so we can compare normal and actual. So this is the actual distribution, the red dots. This is the actual histogram. The normal distribution should be like this. I used some funky math to compute, or I used R, to say where these dots should be this one should be up here, if it was normal. So we can look at the differences. So these are the differences. The purple differences are where the normal distribution was higher, that there should have been more people scoring there if it was normal. And the green bars are where there were too many people scoring in reality, and if it was a normal distribution, there should have been far fewer people. So we can look at those differences. And this is what QQ plots or normal probability plots are based on. Now this is a, a bit sloppy. I'm not doing perfectly what QQ plots are doing, but it, it is the basic idea, and it was fun to do these. So let's just look at these differences here, and now let's, um, let's take this normal distribution curve and flatten it so the purple bars will go down and the green bars will go up. Oh wait, I reversed it. I think I flattened it and flipped it over. Anyway, so the purple bars are on top and the green bars are on bottom now. So these are deviations from the normal curve. If you have a big bar, it's a big deviation. The frequency in that category was really different from what it should have been under the normal distribution. And if you have a little bar, then the frequency was very close to what it should have been if, it, if the variable had been normally distributed. So that's what QQ plots are, what normal probability plots are. They're a view of what we should have been seeing if the distribution was normal versus what we actually see. So if we put that on an angle, then that's kind of similar. I mean, you have this down here, and then coming up here, and then down here. And again, down here, and then coming up here, and down here. There are a number of differences because of the way I did that example. <coughs> and then the, the normal curve line is a little different. But this is it. So now we can look, and we can see here. So here, we can see there's a big deviation there are far too many um, actual observations for what should have happened under the normal distribution. And here it's looking okay, but then down on the bottom, again, there are too many actual observations down on this tail. There shouldn't have been so many going down here. So if when you look at this, the big thing to look at is do the dots follow the line or not. And these do not follow the line. Now there are a lot of different functions in R. This is the one, this is similar to the one you will find in R Commander, which I recommend. It's a really great function. These dashed lines are confidence intervals. So they tell you how likely it is that with random sampling you should get variations. Well, these dots are going way outside those dashed lines, and that's bad. So what this is telling you is that's really not a normal distribution. So this red dot distribution is really not normal, which you didn't really need a graph for, a, a special graph for, because you can see it in the original histogram. But sometimes it's very helpful because our eyes don't work. Now here's a different distribution. This is from the same uh, sample, or data set sample. Um, this is distribution of the perceived stress scale. This is how much stress people perceive in their lives. There's some reason big spike there and there. I don't know quite why. Maybe because of how I did the binning. I did a histogram. You gotta lump things together. And this is a perfect normal distribution. What should be happening. Again, we can look at the differences between those things. And then we can 
just flatten out the normal curve and just look at deviations from normal. So what this is, is at each point, well, at each kind of range along the distribution, what are the deviations from normal? And then, once again, we tilt that on its side. Now think how different this is from the previous one. It's a little off down here on the lower end. We're getting a little bit of skew down here on the lower end. But it's looking pretty good. I mean, this is pretty tight. It's a little outside here, but not too much. Um, it's in bars because you can only get certain types of scores on this, or certain types are the most likely. Because just because of the way the math works out on some of these questionnaires, you're not going to get a 26.67. You might get like a, a 26 and a 28, but you can't get a 27, that kind of thing. So this tells us that the PSS, the perceived stress scale, the distribution in the sample, is pretty normal. It's looking good. So let's look at a few more. So here's an actual histogram for another variable. And there's the normal curve approximation. And this is what it's looking like in a QQ plot. So you can tell this little lumping here, there's too much on the bottom. So you can see here, there's too much in this tail. This tail should come down more slim if it was true normal. And it, but it doesn't. It's too fat down here. So you can see that here. And in the top tail, there's kind of too little. So it trails off a bit here. Or, well, it's too little for a while. And then there's too much still happening. It should drop off more. So this kind of thing usually means that we have it's a little too fat in the tails and it's a little bit positively skewed. This kind of S shape for skew. Accountability judgment from the punishment data set, just using the student data. Um, you can tell there's a negative skew here, normal distribution. On the negative skew, you get too much stuff down on the bottom here, too thin. And it just kind of, the tail just keeps going on when it should taper out. And here you should have more stuff going on, but you don't. And that is represented here. We're below the line, not good. And then we're up on the line, that's okay for the middle. But we kind of bulge up above the top of it, and then we go back a little below again. So once again, a skewed distribution. And we can tell because these dots do not follow a perfect diagonal line. So what this is a plot is, a plot of is like the z-scores of the data as it actually is versus the z-scores of the data as they should be in the normal distribution. Um, so let's look at, I don't know why this is so screwed up, the number of sex offenders people have perso personally known. That is horribly skewed. <laughs> it's horrendously skewed. And let's see what the QQ plot is of that one. Let's put that on its side. And this is the normal distribution. Um, it kind of starts at zero there our best guess of the normal distribution, which is a terrible guess given that it's so skewed. This is horrible. So <laughs> we get too many down here, and then, wow, you see this shooting up there? This is standard for um, a positively skewed distribution. Kind of comes down and like a sine curve like that, and might or might not meet the line at the bottom. So the big thing you should get is horrible deviation from that red line. So this is not a normal distribution. We should not be using the normal approximation. We should not be using P norm and Q norm. Here's participant age. <laughs> once again, a terribly positively skewed distribution. And once again, we have this problem. We have everything kind of below the red line here, except this big spiky thing here. Because there's too few people here. All the way across, there's too few. Because there's too many down in this end. So you can tell that in the distribution. Nothing is following the red line. Religious fundamentalism score. Ooh, that looks good. It's a lot closer. Still a little too fat in that lower tail. And then it tapers off a little too quickly in the top there. So not perfectly normal, but a lot closer. It would be nice if we had those confidence interval lines to see how bad it is that this isn't quite on the line. But still, this is a lot more normal. You can, t you can just tell from the QQ plot there. Right-wing authoritarianism. Oh, that one's looking nice. Oh, look how beautiful that is. And yet, we get too few people down here, so it drops off a little too fast on the low end and maybe a little too fast on the top end. So when you have something like this, your tails are a little too thin. But most of it is running the length here, and it's not uncommon for things to go wonky on the ends, so the confidence interval bars kind of go hourglass-shaped to account for that. So this, this is actually fairly normal looking. This is nice. Victim blame score for students. Positive skew. We can tell 
there's what it should look like if it were normal versus what it does positive skew and you can tell it kind of starts on the top and runs along and then goes back up again in kind of a U shape there alright and that's where I'm gonna end we're done with this chapter 3